Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer and this beer involves two breweries who have reviewed quite a lot of different things from now and both very very good breweries in their own right. So this one is half Swedish, half English. For the Swedish side of things we're going to return to Stockholm and have a look at another beer from Omni Pollo. This is yet another one of these big beastly imperial stouts and this is a collaboration that they did with Buxton Brewery who are from Derbyshire in England. This one's called the Anniversary Coward. It comes in at 13% ABV. They're describing it as an imperial stout brewed with aromas of peanut and biscuit and uh, this is basically brewed as a you know, to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Yellow Belly beer which was recently discontinued because of uh, a, a trademark claim, if you like, from another brewery actually, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But as we know, both of these breweries are very capable of producing some really awesome Imperial Stouts and other styles of beer, of course, as well. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. This was yet another one that I picked up from Glassbank and uh, I very rarely order beer online, but they had a good couple of things in, and uh, I ordered about 10 beers or so, so you will see more of these appearing over the next little while, actually. But really looking forward to this one and as I say I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. You can check out the link to Glass Bank in the description below. A little bit pricey but you do get some unusual beers on there. So anyway as is always the case with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Omni Pollo and from Buxton Brewery. No doubt there will be more added to both in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the English beers. This beer will appear in both of those lists and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Omni Pollo and Buxton then. So as I've told you before, Omni Pollo was founded back in 2011 by Henrik Fenty, who was a long-time home brewer, and Carl Grandin, who was a clothing designer. But the two met kind of randomly one day, and when they were talking, they decided to start a brewery because they were discussing just kind of how insular the craft beer scene was in Sweden, and of course abroad as well. And so they wanted to kind of reinvigorate it in Sweden from both a kind of gastronomic sense and from a, a design or stylistic sense as well so they felt that this partnership between uh, a home brewer and a clothing designer was, was pretty logical actually but the name itself is derived from omnipotent chicken so omni pollo pollo spanish for chicken of course and these guys are gypsy brewers so they've got no brewery of their own and they use spare capacity at other breweries and they brew many collaboration beers as a result of this they're currently exporting to uh, somewhere in the region of 40 countries these days and they're continually expanding a lot of their beers are brewed at buxton brewery in england a lot of the big imperial stouts are brewed there. They do brew a number of things at Dugas Brewery, uh, just outside of Gothenburg as well. And I can't remember, I think they still brew quite a few things at the Prof Brewery in Locriste Hefte, just outside of Ghent in Belgium as well. But they've also got their uh, Omni Pollo Hat Bar in Stockholm too, which is where it's a collaboration with Pizza Hat. So you get some really, really nice pizzas there, and you also get a lot of the Omni Pollo beers that you're not going to find uh, elsewhere either. And I really do recommend that you check that out. I've been there twice, and uh, it really is pretty damn good, I have to say. So if you get the chance and you find yourself in Stockholm, I highly recommend that that you check that place out. Not too far from the Gamla Stad, from what I remember, actually. So yeah, make sure you get you check out um, the Omni Pollo hat if you do get the chance. So yeah, that's all you need to know about Omni Pollo just now. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. They are a fairly prolific brewer, so that'll keep you up to date with all the latest beers that they're releasing. So anyway, on to Buxton Brewery then. So as I mentioned earlier, Buxton Brewery is based in the town of Buxton, hence where they get their name, which is a spa town in Derbyshire in England. And this brewery was founded by Jeff Quinn back in 2010 and they've actually got a very small staff I think it's only around 10 people that are employed there now but this local area is known as the Peak District and it's famed for its water which has apparently been revered since Roman times they named the town Aquae Arnimitiae if I'm pronouncing that correctly which literally translates into English as the waters of the goddess of springs just because the water was so pure actually but most of their beers are named after local geographical and geological features at least most of their early ones were but they have kind of changed that a little bit recently but 
the tower that's depicted on the Buxton Beers is actually called Solomon's Temple or the Grinlow Tower and this was actually a folly tower that was built simply for decoration and uh, as I say that is the uh, the Buxton Brewery symbol but the Buxton Beers have won many different accolades all across the style spectrum of course and they've been ranked in the world top 100 breweries by Rate Beer. They're one of the best and most diverse craft breweries I would say in England so if you're interested in English craft beer then you can't really go wrong if you pick a Buxton beer. I've had IPAs from them, I've had uh, Imperial Stouts, I've had Scotch Ales and they've all been pretty damn good I have to say. Um, but these guys are also exporting to somewhere in the region of 30 countries worldwide and I think at full capacity they can produce somewhere in the region of 100,000 litres of uh, beer per month or something like that so they are a fairly big craft brewery these days and as I say exporting to around 30 or 40 different countries but yeah this collaboration between uh, Omnipoil and Buxton has been going on for quite a while they've both uh, as I say Omnipoil brew a lot of their imperial stouts with Buxton but that's all you really need to know about Buxton Brewery just now one of the bit one of the better rated English craft breweries and in my experience that's justified and if you want to learn a little bit more about these guys you can check out the brewery website once again and follow them on Facebook and Instagram and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery the Buxton beers are very easy to get actually and in Copenhagen you will find them quite regularly but yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then so as I mentioned to you at the start of the video this one is a 13 percent imperial chocolate chip cookie stout it was brewed to celebrate five years of yellow belly but unfortunately yellow belly has now been discontinued because of a claim from Bateman's brewery in Lincolnshire in England because they had a yellow belly beer and apparently people that are local to this area in Lincolnshire are known as yellow belly so they said it's a copyright claim even though this beer has been in existence for um for five years since one of the rainbow projects that was done it's kind of ridiculous to be honest with you but um yeah that's just how it goes sometimes so they brewed this beer to celebrate five years of the um of the yellow belly collaboration which i thought was pretty cool so um yeah let's go on and actually have a taste of this beer then we can get rid of the brewery notes i'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we're opening it up there so you can see a uh, smashing up of the swastika there um, which is yeah you know the whole the yellow belly was brewed as a collaboration just to um, they used the sort of KKK imagery just to sort of say you know racism is bad and all of this kind of thing Henok Fenty of course uh, by ethnicity if you want to put it that way is actually Ethiopian um, so and he moved to Sweden a good couple of years back from what I gather but yeah um, it's, yeah they're basically saying fascism is bad which it is communism is also bad because you know the communists killed about as many people as the fascists did so always interesting with these uh, with these kind of images and things like that but yeah on the back there you can see here's the standard kind of omnipoil artwork and things they always have something like this on the back of their uh, on the back of their labels and things like that too but um, yeah I do agree with this you know the most important thing for us in politics I think is to uh, to stand up for democracy so yeah I agree with the kind of sentiment that they've got here but just remember communism and fascism just as bad as each other but um, yeah let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then really curious to see how this one turns out I always enjoy these big beastly stouts that you get from Omnipoil and you can smell the peanut butter from this one already Oh, this is going to be a monster, I think. This is my Sunday evening stout, coming to terms with having to go back to work tomorrow. But first, it's not hard to go back to work. It's quite nice work in there. But yeah, so as you can see with this beer, and as you would expect, oh, you can get, you know, you get these big cakey candied aromas out of these Omnipoil stouts, and you can smell that right away with this one. As you can see, and as you would expect, with this beer being an Imperial stout, it's poured that lovely, dark, ebony rosewood colour. Um, so this one, if you uh, you know, if you hold it up to the light, it is, you know, pitch black. There's no light coming through this. It doesn't even have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola ebony edge to it. It really is just straight up black as night. Um, it really is just <laughs> as dark as you can get. There's a solid half finger of a frothy, I would say quite dark tan head on that one actually. It's a very dark sort of mocha. Uh, tan head on this beer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but you can see very slowly there's just a few little ones moving up towards the bottom of that head there and if I put my fingers behind the glass of course you are not going to get any transparency to this beer at all. This one is, uh, is uh, basically black as night which you would expect from an imperial stout so nothing overly surprising about this beer when we consider um, its style and stuff like that. But let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we got on but straight away with this beer 
you can get um you know you you get the nutty and cakey aromas out of it already which is what you expect from one of these big uh, omnipoyo imperial stouts I think Buxton, you know, this is one of the things. Buxton are a bit more of a straight up brewery. They don't uh, omnipoil add flavour essences to their beers. And it's actually kind of an art in itself. You do get purists who say, you know, that's not right, it's not Reinheit's Gabot Brewing, blah, 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 blah. But to actually find the perfect Imperial Stout to uh, mix some of these flavours in with is a little bit of an art in itself. So, you know, it is another, it's just another style of brewing, in my opinion, at least. But Buxton, as I say, they tend, I don't think they do it. They've maybe done it with a couple of beers, but they tend to be a bit more purist if you like when it comes to their brewing but straight away as soon as you smell this beer the aroma um it's peanuts it's uh, you know it is like a you know peanut butter type aroma that you get out of this one you can smell a nice little bit of milky chocolate in there it does have an almost almost a little bit of a lactosey aroma to it as well so it's chocolate lactosey milky chocolate and also the kind of peanutty uh, type qualities there but it smells very very candied and very very sweet the sort of flavor essences that they put in these beers do tend to dominate the aromas and you'll get that straight away with this one um but yeah it definitely has i'm, I'm pretty sure there's lactose in here it really does smell very creamy and very milky actually um, but yeah um, nothing really coming from the hops there's a little bit of a red fruity note in there you can get a little bit of a figgy plummy raisin type thing um, you can also get just a little bit of a, a kind of candied berry or something like that um, in towards the, uh, the latter part of the aroma but mainly for me very peanut butter very kind of cakey actually it's almost yeah like, it doesn't smell too far away from the Noah Pecan Mud Pie beer that they have, actually, to be honest with you. Although the peanuts in this one are a little bit more pushing their way out of this one. To me, it smells a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more complex than just peanuts. It smells like it's got a couple of different nuts, like almonds and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, very, very sweet. And there's a good bit of brown sugar in there as well. Some sweet caramel, I think. And not even toasty, just a very, very sweet caramelly brown sugar. Almost a little bit like Scottish tablet in some ways. There is a vanilla element in there as well. So once your nose adjusts to this one, when you first smell this beer, to be honest with you, it doesn't come across as being overly complex. It just smells very, very candied. But when you start to smell it a little bit more, you get more and more of the kind of subtle edges of this beer because the, the flavour essence dominates the aroma initially but once your um you know once your uh, nose adjusts to this one then you will start to uh, pick up some of the other things but without further ado then let's have a taste of this beer and just see how it got on so this one is the anniversary covers an imperial stout coming in at 13 percent ebv they're describing this one as a chocolate chip cookie imperial stout or on the back of the can they're saying an imperial stout brewed with aromas of peanut and biscuit and it comes in at 13 percent ebv from omnipoil in stockholm here in sweden and at buxton brewery from derbyshire in england let's get stuck into this one slanger skull Yeah, that's really nice. Um, you definitely, I've not had one of these big kind of candied stouts, if you like, one of these big beastly imperial stouts from uh, Omnipoil in quite a while. And um, you can feel this one to me does feel a little bit boozier than some of the other ones. I think it's 13%. You know, if I'm thinking back to the likes of Lorelei and uh, Yellow Belly and stuff, I think they were around, you know, 11%, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but I think Yellow Belly, the alcohol content of that, changed year on year because they used to brew it every year. But again, this beer is very, very nice. I have to say that. Well done. To, uh, to both breweries involved here, they've pulled off something really pretty damn nice actually. And um, this beer to me, it feels a little bit darker than some of the other ones that I've had from uh, in this kind of in the Omnipoil uh, range, if you like. Um, I, li I just like how everything goes together. You're going to notice it's a big, silky, smooth Imperial Stout. This one, um, it's, it really is just awesome. I have to say, big thumbs up to both breweries involved here. So let's just try and. Um, 
you know, let's just try and break this flavour down then. So right across the middle of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit of a roasty, toasty black malt in there, but it's almost immediately just cancelled out by this sort of smooth, lactosey cover. That just blankets the middle of your palate as well. The further you go into the aftertaste, you start to pick out more of the chocolate. You notice, and I'm finding that towards the back of the tongue, it feels like it's a more... Um, high cocoa chocolate if that makes sense you know sort of 80 90 percent cocoa because you start to get the really strong flavors out of it but you also start to you can feel a little bit of that almost reddish fruity ester that you get uh, from the high uh, cocoa chocolates as well but when you come further forward on the palate I'm finding that it really starts to sweeten up and you get the, the with the, the lactosey flavors that are in there and the more milky chocolate flavors that's when the nutty flavours start to come out of the beer as well. That's where they really start to push their way out of this one, which is interesting. Yeah. The way that everything pushes its way out of this beer and the way all of these flavours kind of evolve together is really nice. And um, But yeah, when you come further forward on the palate on this one, it's almost just to the it's almost like two thirds of the way forward on your tongue. That's where you're getting the milky chocolate. The lactosey flavors are really mixing in with that. You've got a little touch of, uh, you know, the nutty flavors are coming out in there too. Um, yeah, the nut, yeah, the nutty flavors are kind of mixed out in there. You do have that sort of biscuity, cookie type flavor in there also, which is kind of interesting. It really is really cool how everything kind of. Uh, mixes in together with this one. I like how I, I really like this that how this beer goes together. I mean, you know, when they add all these flavor essences to the beers, it's just always interesting to see because it is straight up a liquid that they just pour into the brew actually. Um, but it's really interesting just to see how they come out at different parts on the palate and it works very interestingly. Um, in the very centre of your palate, you'll get this, you feel this almost just little circle where the, the brown sugar notes in this beer come out. And to me, it's quite a sweet caramel, this one. It's not like treacle or molasses or anything. It's just a very, very sweet caramel. And that's what's covering up the boozy side of this beer. Of course, the chocolate and the other things in there are really helping out with the different um, parts of the beer too, which is really nice. Yeah, I do like that with this. Um, the brown sugar in the middle of the palate it's really nice and you just feel it becomes a little bit sharper towards the uh, the edge of the tongue too. I really like I really just like how everything is um is going together in this one. This is a really quite nice beer I have to say. Um the malt I mean obviously when you've got a big imperial style like this the focus is going to be on the uh, the malt base. But again, they've pulled it off really nicely. It's not really a surprise, um, and it's difficult to say with these beers. You know, you know, you ha if you want to pick a favourite one of these, but they're all quite different in their own rights, actually. And like I say, part of the art of the brewing that this one, the Omnipoil and Buxton, are going to have to do is find the perfect base beer to add these essences to. Um, so it's really kind of interesting, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, the way that this malt base goes together is really nice. I find this one generally a little bit darker than some of the other ones that I've kind of come across. It does have a little bit more of a, a toasty, but still very oily um, toasty character to it compared to some of the other ones. It's definitely not as sweet as some of the other um, Omnipoil stouts that I've come across before. Pardon me before. On the hoppy side of things then... Um, this beer is just very, very smooth. Um, there's a little touch of earthiness there in the back corners of the palate, but it's a very smooth earthiness. And as you come further forward along the side of the tongue, that just spreads out a little bit. You do get a little touch of a floral quality on the front corners of the palate. I would actually suspect that they've used a little bit of German noble hop in here. I'd be quite, maybe I'm a bit bold in saying that, but I do suspect there's a little bit of German noble hop in here. And then round the very front curve of your palate, you've just got that lighter, um, grassy ester to the beer as well, which is interesting. Yeah. And um, this beer, oh, you can sit and it, it's, it'll take you a while to drink this one. Just be aware of that and you can feel it does give you a nice little bit of boozy warmth down here, but the fruity side of this beer is also really interesting. If you just go behind the front curve of your palate, 
that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer and like I say behind that you can feel the peanuts you can feel the chop the milky chocolate and the vanilla but in front of that you get the fruity side of the beer and the way that the fruits and those other flavors that I was talking about interact gives the impression of a kind of cakey like almost brownish type feel to the beer um, the cookie flavours kind of sit a little bit further the sort of biscuity cookie flavours they sit further back on the tongue right enough but yeah there's a little bit of a you know there's a, a, a sort of candied strawberry thing it really reminds me of the little heart shaped sweets in Haribo Star Mix that's mainly what I'm getting out of this one there's not really a raisiny or a plummy sharpness to this one it's maybe like a sort of I don't even know if it's black currant to be honest with you. There's maybe a little touch of black currant in there, blackberry, blueberry kind of thing. It's just got this very candied, um, berryish quality, but it's not tart at all. It is more of a juicy berry that comes out of this one, and that comes out more and more the further that you go into the aftertaste, which is really quite nice. Um, it's I'm not sure if there's a there's something strange at the front of the palate as well. Yeah, there is just something very fresh about this beer at the front as well. It's almost as if there's like a teeny, teeny bit of mint um, in this beer too. I'm just getting a very kind of light cooling sensation towards the front of my palate and it is almost just as if they've added a little touch of mint into the beer as well, which would be quite interesting. I have had um, a couple of IPAs that have had almost that minty quality within the hops, which is kind of interesting too. But yeah, I mean... In terms of an Imperial Stout, it's a beautiful, beautiful beer, this one. So have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. The flavour profile is really nice. If you know what the Imperial uh, the Imperial Stouts are, the collaboration between Omnipoyo and Buxton, it's not really doing anything overly different, but it is kind of a different beer within its own regard, if that makes sense. It's got, it's, it's got enough to keep you interested, but it's not um, something unknown that they're doing basically i think that's a good way to summarize it but it's a beautiful beer this one and i wouldn't hesitate to drink it again but the chances of doing that are uh, very very slim to be honest with you this will probably be the only time that i drink this beer as is the case with most of the beers that i review for you here on the channel but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then uh, i would say this is a full-bodied beer carbonation is very smooth big big oily mouthfeel in this one um Nice big sweet malt base to this one, although in fairness the malt base and the adjuncts do become kind of intertwined at some point so it's kind of difficult to say where the malt base ends and the, the sort of essences, the flavour essences and stuff begin but generally the middle of your palate in this one is very sweet. There is a little bit of bitterness from the, the hoppy side of things but to be in fairness I think you'd be lucky to get about 30 IBUs out of this beer. There is a little bit, I do suspect there's a bit of German noble hop in here just because of the way the earthiness is, uh, is coming out. I do suspect that with this beer. But um, yeah, generally a very sweet imperial stout, this one. Um, not too far off a milk stout, actually. Um, but yeah, also a little bit of a juicy, fruity quality. And also, also just has that little, almost slightly minty, refreshing kind of thing at the start as well. But again, another beautiful, beautiful beer from Omnipoyo in Buxton. And I'm really glad that I was able to review this for you because this obviously is a kind of special occasion beer. This, And I do agree with the message, you know, fight fascism. But at the same time, fight communism and fight relig you know religious extremism as well. Basically, fight, fight uh, oppressive regimes because there's a hell of a lot of them be they you know uh, you know, be they religious, be they communist, be they fascist, there's a hell of a lot of uh, threats to democracy these days and democracy of course is king so you know big thumbs up to uh, Omnipoil and Buxton uh, within that regard as well and they've produced a very nice beer to mark the fifth anniversary of the Yellow Belly of course. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The anniversary covered an Imperial Stout at 13% ABV. Basically like a you know a chocolate chip a peanut chocolate chip cookie stout this one I would have to say. Um, but a beautiful beer nonetheless from Omnipoyo and from Buxton and I'm really glad that I was able to review this one for you. So once again thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Omnipoil and from Buxton, and I'm sure we'll return to both of these breweries in the fairly near future. Make sure you check out my social media, and I will catch you guys very soon. Check out this beer if you get the chance, but I think it might be pushing it a little bit. Till the next time, stand you just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Skull.